Welcome back. We have a very interesting uh, guest today, Dr. Amanullah Sheikh, a consultant psychiatrist, and his area of specialization is particularly children, adolescents, and uh, geriatrics. Uh, we have been causing, uh, talking about a lot of things, and we have covered a lot of areas, but I would like to ask uh, our visitor today, our guest today, uh, there are a lot of myths about uh, these mental health problems, you see. Is it genetic? Is it caused by any other reason? Or something like all mental health patients are dangerous and that the medicines that they are given are not working, rather they are working opposites, making it worse. Is that true? Okay. Let me take one by one the questions, you have asked three questions <laughs> here. So let me uh, say about the genetics. Right. Is it genetics? I think there is a contribution, genetic contribution to mental illness like say schizophrenia. There is seven percent chance yeah. <coughs> of a child becoming schizophrenic if the father is a schizophrenic. Only 7%. 7%. If the father and mother both are schizophrenic, it doubles. Mm -hmm. It becomes 14% chance right. that a child will also end up being schizophrenic. But that is about schizophrenia. The there is no scientific evidence even though we see that this is the incidence but we don't know what um, um, genetic focus there is is there a, a chromosomal defect mm -hmm. or we don't know so it is still multifactorial but there is a genetic uh, genetic element there is genetic element in personality problems as well that if a father is a suspicious person, paranoid person, I think he can transmit these paranoia to his children. But there genetically. Isn't, uh, genetically. Not, Not through uh, training. I think there is a bit of genetics and bit of environment as mm -hmm. well because the child has seen his father behaving, behaving like the that, yeah. way so he learns also behaving so about the genetic contribution to mental illness there is a limited right. um, uh, contribution <coughs> all the other factors are still unknown <coughs> um, about the mentally ill patients becoming violent yeah. and uh, people should be afraid of them and keep out of them uh, their uh, reach. Uh, reach. That is a bit of a myth. Statistically, there is no violent person who is mentally ill, then there is violent person who is not mentally ill. Mm -hmm. So there is no difference. It isn't that mentally ill people are more violent. That hasn't been proved. Mm -hmm. It has been proved that the violence, even without mental health, there is a lot more violence outside the mental health. So that is a myth right. that mental health people are violent. That's not true. Well, it's commonly said that if you receive a sad news, a heartbreaking news, then it can affect your mental health. Also, can, can, it can affect somebody's heart condition. Uh, does receiving too good a news also dangerous? I think, yeah, yeah, that, that, that I, I was, uh, I was uh, expecting that you would uh, bring that on. <laughs> um, 
I have mentioned about manic depressive psychosis. Right. Yeah, yeah. People do have a manic depressive psychosis as a disorder, but it may be hidden and sudden good news can bring on the hidden mental health issue. Right. I don't think it particularly causes mental health issue, mm -hmm. but it can trigger yeah. a symptom in mental health. Already existing symptom. Already dormant mm -hmm. symptoms, which has never been manifested before. A sudden good news or sudden bad news yeah. can bring on that. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Uh, I just want to, at this point, I want to uh, show to my viewers uh, that uh, Dr. Amanullah Sheikh has written a very interesting book about uh, his journey through Britain and journey through his life. The name is My Journey to Britain, and it says about it's a one man's autobiographical journey through his arrival and subsequent survival over four decades in Britain. He has had, he has suffered good things and bad things both, we all suffer. Uh, uh, and the best thing is, Alhamdulillah, he's fine and he's uh, with us today and is doing wonderfully well on this show. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask is, is that the latest technology, the, the, the mobiles and this craze of selfies, taking pictures of themselves, see people, uh, whether grown-ups or girls or boys or, or of any age. And uh, this is a craze, see, and then posting it on the social media. Is it some sort of a uh, disease? Is it some mental sort of a disorder. craze? Or is it some sort of a mental disorder? Is let me, let me deal with it in a two different way, or two separate uh, topics. One is about mobile phone. Right. Mobile phone is a craze all over the world, irrespective of age. Yep. Older people as crazy with mobile phone as young people and even children. Yep. So mobile phone it's is like a, a virus. technology which has taken over all other aspects of our life. So that's about mobile phone. Right. Now, about selfie, photography, yeah. I think I, I, I am totally amazed how photography has advanced over the years. You remember when in our, our time <laughs> we had box camera and where you put the film in and you take, a, take picture and then take it to the uh, the photographer studio. to yeah. get it developed and, and then print and wait it for three, and four all days. That. that was only yesterday I would say. Yeah. But look at the photography nowadays. Well can we come to the point my my question see your question is selfie. Yeah. So photography has advanced yeah. and we are all fascinated with the advanced technology of photographing people or photographing oneself. Yes. I think selfie may have a little bit of element of self-love or narcissistic, but I think publicity, I think we all want publicity right. and such a quick and effective yep. way of publicizing oneself is so so overwhelming and it's in everybody's hand everybody's hand and taking picture and within a second Posting they can send it, it to all over the world <laughs> so the power of this technology is uh, taking over uh, our doctor uh, uh, Aman, uh, in one sentence what is the recipe of a healthy mind in a healthy body Now, there isn't one recipe. I think... Happiness? I think one has to treat 
as a human being, as a whole person. Yeah. And the remedy is multifactorial and multifaceted. There isn't one particular um, speciality who can deal with okay, the, sir, thank you with very the much. whole On thing. this uh, unknown factor, we will uh, uh, say goodbye and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, having you on the show. It's an honor. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us and I hope that you've enjoyed the show as much as we have. Uh, just a reminder that uh, NTV will be broadcasting live from the Boshaki Mela this year again from Weversfield on Sunday, 14th of May from 12 to 7 p.m. Be there. Come one, come all. Thank you.